Hi, I'm Max Brantley from the Arkansas Times on Thursday, November the 10th. Welcome to Trump and Saw. I'm putting in mind of William Faulkner today. No, not as I lay dying, although that's appropriate for difficult political times. But Tim Kaine quoted uh, William Faulkner the other night in his concession remarks, talking about the Confederate soldier returning home and says, well, Colonel, they killed us, but they ain't whooped us yet. Well, I thought of them today when uh, the, they chose committee assignments in the Arkansas House of Representatives. The Democrats are badly outnumbered. Only 24 of 100 members are Democrats, but they managed to nail down 11 of the 20 seats on the important House Revenue and Taxation Committee. 11's a majority. That means nothing can get through that committee without approval of majority of Democrats. Now, I don't expect them to raise taxes or bring tremendous amount of elemental fairness on, on rich people's tax rates, but they might be able to use that leverage to get, for example, an earned income tax credit for poor people, something they've tried before but unable to get. Uh, they also got nine seats out of 20 on the Aging Children and, uh, Committee, which is also an important place for, for helping people in need. They can make some important political points in those committees for sure. Lieutenant Tim, Lieutenant Governor Tim Griffin, a Republican, is furious about this. It's, it's an affront to democracy that the Democrats have managed to win control of a House committee. He says, this is a guy who participated in voter caging activities to suppress black votes in Florida under George W. Bush. Also, it needs to be noted that these committee seats were chosen under rules adopted by a majority Republican-controlled House of Representatives. I'm sure they can figure out a way to change the rules in the future to prevent this from happening again. But for today, there may be a little bit of justice at the Arkansas House of Representatives. Speaking of election news, there's tension in South Arkansas today that seems to have some relationship to electoral affairs. We can hope this stays tamped down. In Star City, uh, somebody wearing a, a Donald Trump mask taunted a black student. This set off some racial tensions there. No violence yet at this point. There was also some racially related remarks that spurred the cause of a potential violent threat at Hamburg High School. Again, nothing happened, but things are simmering pretty close to the surface. As you may know, there was a small protest, silent and peaceful, in Little Rock last night and on Dixon Street in Fayetteville as well. There's going to be another peaceful protest of the Trump presidency Friday night at the state capitol. These are all good outlets for unhappy people, but I think constructive means to prevent future election losses and to find policies that bring more people into coalition are probably eventually going to be the solution to the Trump election. He's not going to go away, that's, that's for sure. And, and speaking of the election, one more thing that's been overlooked. I think there's been a lot of discussion about the Democrats' failure to turn out as many people as they did in the Obama years, also a failure to reach uh, these middle class non-college educated white voters. All true. But also vote suppression legislation by the Republicans have had an effect. Great article in The Nation magazine today about people turned away from the polls in Wisconsin under laws passed Republican leadership there. Hillary Clinton was only trailing by 27,000 votes in Wisconsin. Something like 300,000 people were left without sufficient IDs to vote in Wisconsin's election. That could have made the difference. That could have made the di difference in the whole election. Similar laws were used in North Carolina and other important swing states. <clears throat> The Razorback women's basketball team says it will stand for the national anthem in all future games. You may remember that they kneeled, six of them did, before an uh, exhibition game last week, and, and the criticism has been deafening. The bullies have been out in force saying they didn't have a right to do this and that the university should be punished for letting these women express their rights to First Amendment speech. I think they made their point. I think they won. I think they got national attention, and I think at least a few people may have stopped for a minute to put themselves in the shoes of black people and how they're treated when they move about America. But in any event, I think the heads at the University of Arkansas and the leadership have prevailed on them to channel their energy into some on-campus activities that will continue to talk about these issues. They may not have changed many hearts, but they certainly got some attention, and I applaud them for that. Supreme Court Justice Rhonda Wood issued a lengthy opinion today in which she said she will not get off nursing home cases involving Michael Morton, the nursing home magnate in Arkansas who contributed a tremendous sum of money to her campaign. Her campaign also got other nursing home money as well. He's also been involved in, in a case in which allegedly his money persuaded a judge to reduce a verdict in his court over a nursing home case. That, that judge happened to be a friend of Rhonda Wood. The money that she received from Michael Morton and the money that Michael Maggio, the defrock judge, received from Morton, both came through a bag man, Gilbert Baker, who uh, is also part of the Faulkner County group of friends that, that worked on election issues until everything hit the fan. She says it was long ago, the money wouldn't influence her, that $40,000 wasn't enough to, 
to be in the level that the courts have shed, said should be considered in recusals and she vows to be impartial. She perhaps has made the right decision under the law. Eventually her record though is going to get a great deal of scrutiny both for the money she received, her connections to Morton, her connections to Gilbert Baker, and her connections to Michael Maggio. She, she's going to be under a hot spotlight in the future, that's for sure. Robinson Center is, is now open officially and it's a beautiful place. Go to our blog or our Rock Candy blog or Brian Shilson's Facebook page and see lots of great pictures there. I like to close with something lighthearted when I have a chance, but these are dark and terrible times and one of the darkest things today was an interview that uh, Tom Cotton gave to a national media outlet and once he said he's happy about Donald Trump's election because he thinks this certainly will mean the return of the use of waterboarding. Yes. Tom Cotton is happy about the return of the use of torture by the United States of America, something George Washington wouldn't countenance and John McCain wouldn't countenance and people who have been in a position to have an understanding of what works and what doesn't work in intelligence don't countenance. But that's Tom Cotton and that's Donald Trump's America and we're in it. I'll be back tomorrow.